learning about hip disease is a huge opportunity and learning about this particular field of, of the hip is, um, is filled with, um, it's a little bit like being an astronaut when in the, Alan Shepard being the first person going up in the, you know, in the rocket ship. You're not sure whether you're going to, what you're going to see and whether you're going to land and whether it's going to be safe. You're never really quite sure, but that's the excitement. It's also the challenge. In the hip joint, we will, the next 10, 20 years, we will, we will find so many new pathologies or we will improve the understanding of the hip that's uh, uh, where are we right now. I mean, we, do some, we, we improve our patients, we, we, we reduce pain, we improve function, but uh, there are no studies yet that prove that what we are doing will stop or will slow down uh, degeneration or osteoarthritis. So. so I think that we're just at the beginning stage. I think where it's going to go is not just the physicality, the changing the physicality of the hip, but I think the new frontier will be the biologics. And I think that's a very exciting field that is just emerging, but I think it's going to really change the f way we do surgery. Well, I think biology is going to become more and more um, a um, an important factor, so uh, the mechanical aspect is going to go uh, lower and lower in biology uh, as soon as we understand more of it, or we've understood a lot, but the, um, I think there's a lot of progress to do, so people will have all kinds of uh, cells, like we're taking tablets and, you know, they, they would be taking uh, these uh, extraordinary types of fluids inside the hip uh, that would heal the hip without, let's say, surgical intervention, or part of the intervention would be uh, that biology uh, type of treatment. I think uh, cartilage injuries are something that uh, we haven't figured out, not only in the hip, but in every joint. So uh, technology that allows us to repair advanced cartilage changes in order to preserve a natural joint should be the way to go, and definitely within the hip as well. So there's other avenues we have to look into, like uh, osteoporosis is a big problem worldwide for, um, for, 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 for people. Like osteoporosis leads to femoral neck fractures, and I think in the near future we will have a solution to maybe prevent these fractures or at least try to decrease the incidence of this fracture, and it will be done arthroscopically. I think that's going to be a big part of the future, but also cartilage repair, biologics, uh, speed of recovery. These are the things I think that uh, we will achieve in, over the next five to ten years. You know, what excites me about this field is the number of brilliant, young, innovative guys coming along, some really smart guys, because when we started with this, there was a couple of us cowboys out there trying it, but really, you knew the handful of people that were doing it, and we could go speak together. We could give each other's talks because we knew what each other were going to say. But now we've got some true clinical scientists, people with brilliant scientific minds getting involved, and I think we're, we're clearly just barely scratching the surface on where this is heading. Not because of me, but what these young people are going to bring along. So you really need to work with somebody who's good at it learn the techniques of it, more importantly, learn how and, and when to do it, who are the appropriate people to have it. Then find yourself a niche and really go for it. Practice ahead of time. Uh, you know, as somebody said, getting into the hip is not, um, is not the challenge. It's doing what you need to do and getting out of the hip without people knowing you were there. And then the other thing I tell them is when they start, make sure they keep records, keep, the, keep all the data from all the stuff you've done right from the start. Hip arthroscopy is going to get easier because we've been doing really pretty primitive surgery. Uh, it was uh, many, many years before we really had a good raison d'etre for what we were doing and why. And we're only beginning to understand the pathomechanics of how hips work. Uh, so there's going to be a parallel evolution in the imaging and the computer simulations and the understanding of the kinematics of how a body moves allows us to work out whether the hip is unstable or catching or stuck or wrong shape. And until we have that knowledge, we can't really do the best surgery. So for young people getting involved in the field, they really need to understand what is the problem 
And if you understand the problem, you've got a fighting chance of making it better. Oh, it's endlessly fascinating. It's so, it's so complicated. It's, it's absolutely ingenious and amazing. So, and I mean, the more we learn about tissues and how they work and stuff, the more incredible it is. Um, it's just amazing. I mean, who would have guessed?